The sport of off-road racing is full of incredible stories, wild characters, legends, and even villains. We cover it all on offroadracer.com, but there's only so much we can put down in an article. Sometimes we have to dig a little deeper, and that means sitting down with some of our industry's most influential characters and hitting record. Welcome to the Off-Road Racer Podcast, a Mad Media production, made exclusively for offroadracer.com. Each month, we'll go beyond the dirt into the homes, shops, and lives of the most interesting and game-changing icons of our sport. You'll hear about their history, success, failure, and everything in between as we pull back the curtain and reveal the stories of their lives. I'm your host, Matt Martelli, and this is the Off-Road Racer Podcast. I'm Matt Martelli here uh, with Off-Road Racer Podcast. I'm here with Caden McCackling. What's up, Caden? How are you? Yeah, great to be here. I'm a little bit of a new podcast starting up here, and uh, it's about something I love the most, off-road racing. So that's cool, and uh, it's such an honor to be here and um, get one of those episodes wrapped up. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty easy to talk about off-road with off-road people, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, so we were talking earlier. I mean, it's really cool to watch you go through this transition of being on the Polaris factory team. What's that been like? Yeah, of course. Um, the last couple of years, really trying hard and racing and, and being somewhat, you know, like my father, Rob Mack, and um, kind of kind of got a little bit of a break here with uh, the Polaris factory team approaching me last year and um, knowing that they were going to start up some kind of in-house uh, factory team and ultimately being invited to come race on it. We're, um, we're two races in right now, and... Um, you know, I, I love the team aspect of it. We're all working together for the same goal. Um, got a lot of great minds a part of it, um, and, and we've had we've had and seen a lot of success out of it. So I'm, you know, stoked to be a part of it. Um, being a little kid growing up, always you know seeing the moto and the supercross stuff. You know, the factory teams, the the the, the, the big names and stuff, and being a part of it now is uh, super cool. Yeah, it's it's got to be fun. I mean. What, what you know? What was that like when they gave you the call? Is that like pretty good feeling? Yeah, there was a little bit um you know of um you know it, it it happened over quite a couple months. You know, it wasn't just you know pick up the phone and somebody was asking me to be a part of the team. Yeah. So uh, I had known it was gonna probably happen for a while, but uh, ultimately putting it together and actually the the real first time it kind of sunk in was going to the race shop in Vista probably maybe in the beginning of February or so, and you know walking in and seeing the guys working on the cars and you know the, the the logos on the wall and everything, and it's like, dang, like I, I feel legit now. You know, I'm not just you know a kid racing out of his garage. I'm actually part of something bigger than me. Yeah, I, I think it's really cool, especially because you know the path they chose to choose younger racers, right? Yeah. You know, talk about some of the other guys that are racing with you. You know, you you've got Hager, yeah, right. He's a savage, yeah. right? Who else is on yeah. the team? Austin Weiland and, and uh, Brock Hager both are on the team with me. Um, both guys have, you know, uh, maybe a little bit of a different um, outlook on the racing, and and have come from different backgrounds racing. Brock's raced, man, since he was in the womb, probably. Yeah. Um. He, he I always say he can he can wheel a shopping cart. He can, his driving skill is uh, phenomenal. Um. And then Austin, you know, he, he's uh, his family's been a part of it for a long time. He knows how to do it. He's a little bit more like me, you know, where we got into it because of our fathers and and family, and and he's. Um, figure out how to do it by hard work and, and determination and trying to always make you or the car or the team, um, all that stuff better. So, you know, all these minds, um, us three thinking, thinking for the same goal has been uh, pretty cool. Yeah. That's, that's gotta be cool. Especially when you're, you know, you're still in the phase in your career where you've, you've got a lot to learn. You know, I imagine being surrounded by other people who are pushing, you know, uh, you know, gives you an advantage. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, you always hear it again back to the supercross motocross teams the number one per, number one person you want to beat is your teammate and that's the same thing with this you know those guys are in the exact same car as me and and they have the exact same uh, capabilities of winning as me for the most part so it's always hard to try to you know find what's going to put you ahead of the next guy and you know that's what we've been working to along with that um working together and, and pre-running together and and uh talking about logistics and pitting and, and race strategy together um, you're really putting, you know, instead of just your one mind thinking about it, you got three minds with maybe three different outlooks on it, um, all coming together for, you know, the same result, uh, which is to win races. Yeah, it's cool. And, and you're two for two in races, right? You've got, you guys have won two races. Yeah, of course, with uh, Craig Scanlon, the, the team principal, um, you know, winning San Felipe. Uh, me and him had a great battle um, most of the day. Um, Colton waiting to the last uh, about 20 miles or so. We had some issues and he was able to take the win. Um, you know, obviously I'm bitter. I want, I want to win, <laughs> but if there's any other person I wanted to win, it would be Craig. You know, he's yeah. raced for a long time, put a lot of effort into it. 
Uh, he's a guy that doesn't come from a family of racing. He, he figured out how to do it on his own with the team and, and seen some su- success over the last couple of years of racing. And for him to win San Felipe, it was uh, pretty awesome and, and really, um, you know, legitimized, legitimized our team. And then we went to the Vaughn 500 and, and Brock Hager, um, who we just talked about, you know, won that race by a pretty good margin. And, and you know, there, there it goes again. You know, we're off to the races. Um, got two more races this year, and we're hoping to do the same. Hopefully I can win both of them, you know. Um, I love talking about those guys winning, but I want to win myself. <clears throat> yeah, talk about that a little bit. So, you know, you've got the 400 and the 1,000 coming up. You know, what's your plan with those? Yeah, yeah the 400, a uh, couple months here, we're going to head, head back down to Baja already. And, you know, um, I always want to go win. And, and, and a part of that comes with, you know, uh, putting the pieces together and such. So that's the plan for both these races is to go win. Um, obviously, there's a lot of other things that have to happen. Um, the number one... Um, goal for me is you know for the, all the team to have success and yes again i want to win right. but but i want the team to have success and i see all the hard work that people behind the scenes that that aren't getting the headlines and stuff are, are doing and they're putting their lives and souls into making this race time, race team work and, and i want to do it for those guys and make sure that uh, as a team we have great results and hopefully come out with a year-end championship for them and and you know just just keep trying and they're putting their heart into it i want to put mine into it and, and have success yeah you guys have some really you know, knowledgeable people involved in the program. I know Ryan Thomas is there as team manager. And then, you know, one of my favorite guys in the, in the business, Johnny Nelson, yeah. you know, who previously co-drove with uh, BJ Baldwin um, and him and I have spent some time together. So, you know, what's that like having that, that, you know, level of, of people working with you and, and experience? Yeah, of course. Like starting from the top, we have like Craig and, and Travis Clark, and, and both those guys in their own right uh, know what they're doing. Uh, Travis is a marketing media mastermind and has, has bring up, brought a lot of uh, eyes and stuff to our sport. Um, Craig, again, he's, he's been a part of um, big companies and brought them from a lower level up to the top. Um, and then working our way down, you know, we have a guy named Adam Arsenault who, who uh, worked with Andy. And he's actually a Marine vet. And uh, he does a lot of our, um, our planning and race operations and stuff. And he's fully into it. Um, it's super serious with him. And he, he doesn't mess around. And, and it's really good to have somebody like that because, you know, sometimes you just need somebody to get your, get your ducks in your row for you. Sure. So uh, he's able to do that. And then, yeah, Ryan Thomas is a team manager. Um, so many years um, competing in Baja, actually living in Baja Sur for a long time. Um, the legacy his, his family has in Baja. And then uh, we have uh, four mechanics working for us. And, and all those guys in, in their own right have uh, put the time in and really, really, really want to win. So it's, it's cool to have in this uh, – you know, big team behind us and to push us forward. Do you, do you feel like, you know, because, you know, obviously you're Rob Mack's son, like, do you feel like there's a lot of pressure on you to win? Yeah. Again, a lot of people have asked me that question. And to me, when people ask, you know, you feel pressure because Rob's your dad. And it's like, no, not pressure at all. Um, he's my dad. And it's probably, I always say he's no different than anybody else's dad. You know, he's just my dad. Again, yes, he's Rob Mack. And he's a lot of, you know, um, legacy and, and um, wins and such in the sport. And yeah, I want to be like him and it's great to have somebody to lean back on, but um, the pressure, not so much. I, I like to think of it as I'm me and I want to go win every race. And I, I feel like um, I've done enough to set myself apart from just being Rob's son, um, which has been awesome for me. You know, I have no problem with being Rob's son and it's what it is. I, I love being his son. He's an awesome dad. And, you know, I just always want to make sure that, uh, you know, Together, we can do the best for um, ourselves and, and, you know, kind of shoot ideas off each other and such to be able to both uh, succeed. Yeah. No, that's rad. I mean, it doesn't seem like in, in all the times we've talked, like, you feel like there's some sort of, like, overlying pressure. You seem pretty relaxed, like, you know what you're capable of. And and really, it's at this point in your career, it's just about learning and, you know, and, and again, you know, following through and, of course, getting wins, which you've already stacked a few. Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, I didn't really start off-road racing when I was a kid like most people. Um, I started at the beginning of 2019, and, you know, a lot of people ask me that, too, is, is uh, you know, why didn't you start racing when you were seven? Obviously, you were born into it or or with, with my dad and even my grandpa racing, and, you know, it just didn't seem like it was the right decision. And my dad, again, with all, all the knowledge and stuff he has of this sport, um, I think he made the right choice, you know, getting me in a little later when I understood um, the consequences and, and the work that goes into racing and such. I think that's been a big part of uh, the success I've had is, is, is not getting into it super early and, and, you know, always expecting somebody else to do it for me or anything, because obviously when you're younger, you can't, 
you can't drive the car to the races. You can't really prep the car that well. And now, um, starting in 2019, you know, I, I did all that stuff myself. I prepped the car. I, you know, the logistics for it, registering for races, all, all these things. And that, that was awesome to me because I was able to stand on top of the podium and know that like most of that work came from me. Obviously there was huge support from my father and other people to help me get there. Um, but you know, on the other side of that, when stuff broke, which luckily we didn't have very often, um, it was on me. I couldn't blame nobody. It was nobody's fault but my own. And, you know, I kind of, I kind of thrived off that knowing that, um, when the result sheet came out and my name was at the top, it was of a lot of my doing, which is always, um, pretty awesome to me. Yeah. That must too, like, drive you to do more and propel you forward yeah absolutely you know always trying to do better always trying to win more and and all those things but um yeah it's been a good ride so far and i'm obviously nowhere uh, near uh, near over 21 years old and i feel like we've done some pretty cool things in the sport so um i want to keep racing until the day i die nice yeah it's it's interesting the father and son dynamic i think i think a lot of times like you know uh, and, and i talked to your dad about this like some fathers are like hesitant to really push their kids into what they love, right? Because they don't want the kid to resist and be like, yeah, that's lame. I, I want to go play basketball, right? Yeah. So I think, you know, you know, I think Rob just was like, let him find his way. Yeah. If, if he figures this out and this is also what he loves, you know, then great, right? But if he's going to, you know, play basketball and that's going to be what he's into, cool, I'll support that. I do, though. It's funny because, like, I jab at him. I'm like, yeah, but you're relieved that he loves off-road, right? And he's like, well, yeah, of course, right? Because uh, it, it's cool. Like, you know, it's cool to see you guys, too, you know, <clears throat> at, you know, whether it's Baja or at the California 300, uh, you know, working together, you know, and, and working with each other. And, you know, you have this common interest, which is off-road racing. Yeah. Obviously, he's done it for a living all his life. So he's seen the good and the bad of it. And I think that came as comes to play part in, in the whole trying to get me into it. Um, he's seen like, you know, there's good and obviously there's bad and, and there's, you know, you focus, you tend to focus on the bad. Maybe he was a little bit of scared, scared of uh, me getting into the sport and wanting to be just like him because he was obviously the sports done so much for our family, him and me um, and, and uh, the, 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 tr the branches and stuff that come off our family. Um, but he, he's seen the, the, the the bad things that come from trying to make your name in the sure. sport. And, and maybe he didn't really want me to do that as much and just wanted to be my decision. Uh, maybe so I couldn't blame him at it, which I, I have, uh, I have no, uh, no regrets for, but, um, yeah, I kind of, I kind of just, uh, took grasp of it and, and ran with it. And it never really crossed my mind. Like one day, Hey, I'm, I'm going to start racing now. It never it wasn't really like that. You know, it kind of just ended up being like, Oh, I started racing and, and here we are. And, you know, just keep going and, and, and try to keep winning races. Yeah, no, that's that's really cool. Racing against your dad is something that 90% of the racers in the world will never get. I've accomplished everything I wanted to do, and now he's just like taking the reins. I want to be remembered for being a, a, a huge part of short course, not just racing, keeping it alive, helping it grow. If it comes down to the last weekend and I'm in it, the boys better watch out. <laughs> I mean, at this point in your career, what's what's been kind of your your favorite race or favorite moment? Yeah, obviously, um, you starting racing and everything. There's a lot of moments, and a lot of times you forget a lot of them. You know, you, it's either late nights in Baja or, or you know early mornings, and and you're trying to prep cars and stuff, and you're last minute getting the car together. But um, I think I think the the moment that was most surreal to me was getting in the trophy truck for the first time at the California 300 in my dad's truck, who I've seen him race you know, a ton, you know, when I was a kid, I used to watch every video, every movie, um, about racing, um, off-road and such. So finally actually, um, getting in that truck at the California 300 and, and, and basically taking off for qualifying, I hadn't really driven that truck at all. Um, you know, a little bit here and there, but not hard, not, not to go for a, you know, for a result or anything. Um, so getting in that truck at the California 300, which is actually ironic. My dad was riding with me for qualifying and, you know, I'm sitting there, with someone who I look up to and, and in something that I look up to, uh, an unlimited truck. And now the green flag goes and, and it's, and it's go time. And I'm racing in, uh, the highest level of our sport at, 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 you know, I was 20 years old at the time. And you flash back seven years before that, when I was, you know, say 13 and, and I, I could never see myself doing that. You know, I would have never told you, I was, I, w I wouldn't even told you I would go to go to Baja in my life. It just didn't seem like it was something that was, um, 
it was out of reach. Kind of it seemed like sure. for whatever reason, you know, you're young, you don't understand things, and now now I can see that it was much more in reach than I ever thought. But uh, yeah, it's was, it was pretty surreal doing that and going to Laughlin in the truck and winning Laughlin. Um, even even partnering with Serapis, that was a that was a big thing. Um, you know, growing up, seeing my dad race the Corona truck for Steve, um, and when I was 11, 12, and 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 Steve calling me and asking me to race that truck with Coors Light on the side, like that's pretty cool. cool. That's cool. And 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 even the whole family, the Serapis family. I was again back back when my dad was racing that truck. Um, uh, Christian and Brett, his boys, uh, Steve's sons were racing and I looked up to them. They were in trophy light about to step yeah. into a, you know, a limited truck at that time and, and started dominating a limited truck. And, you know, I never saw myself being that guy and here we are and I've done it. So, um, I guess every time I think of that, it kind of sinks in more and more and, you know, I, I can't wait ba- uh, to look back in, you know, 40 or 50 years and really think of how big that moment was in my life. But yeah, getting in that truck for a California 300 with my dad next to me, like I would have never told you that would have happened in my life, and it did, and, and it actually paid off, and we did pretty good. Yeah, well, you won your yeah. class. Yeah, you know, and almost really took the overall. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it was close, you yeah. know. But um, yeah, it was it was cool. It was cool for me to see that. You know, again, it's like this thing of like, you know, when you are part of a culture, you want to see these legacies come to fruition, right? And you know, obviously, your, your dad's the goat, right? Yeah. Like he could quit today, and nobody's ever going to catch his, his up with his um, amount of wins, and he's far from done, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. No. What? So what? You know, what are you looking forward to the most? You know, uh, in racing, doing. You know, obviously you have some UTV racing coming up. There probably going to be some opportunity for you to get back into a trophy truck yeah. periodically. You know, what are you looking to the most? I was actually kind of thinking about this question the other day you know just in my mind all day just constantly thinking and rambling things back to myself in my head like you know what what's next for me and I I don't think like that I think I kind of go day by day and just kind of you know cruise through it and take opportunities when when they're around and always be available to those opportunities but uh you know my answer to that question would be I'm, I'm really happy to be a part of the Polaris team and and I look at it as what Polaris and the UTV game industry has done for our sport. I think that's brought it's a massive. ton yeah. of, 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 you know, pe- people that have never been in the dirt. Right. They, they see their buddy or their neighbor across the street with a Polaris in their front yard. Oh, what's that? Oh, you guys go to the dunes or the desert? Well, we're going to do that. Uh, not, all of a sudden, now they're in Baja chasing or the racing. So that's done huge, uh, huge, you know, that's been pretty impactful on me is making sure that I, I really want to be a part of the continuous growth of UTVs and, you know, getting people that don't know about our sport you know, paying attention to our sport, into our sport, or just fans or uh, fans of our sport. I think that's huge. And, you know, that's something that's bigger than me. Yeah. I, I like to be a part. I'd like to be a part of that. So, yeah, I'll, people want, I know, ask me, you know, when are you going to be in a trophy truck? It's like, I don't, do I really want to do that? I think, you know, the so UTV stuff's pretty cool and well, there's, growing and stuff. So yeah, I, I mean, look, cool. there, number one, there's no rush, yeah. right? Number two is like, yeah, I think it's very important to have, you know, young people like you have success in UTVs. Yeah. To show everybody else, right, like what what's possible, but also, man, like how fun they are per dollar. You know, not everybody can afford yeah. to go trophy truck racing, but these UTVs, you know, are very very affordable. And even if you're not racing for for a play vehicle, I mean, dude, you trust me. I don't think anybody who ever buys a UTV walks away and goes, "Yeah, that wasn't very fun." You know what I mean? It's yeah. like the opposite of yeah. like, okay, they usually go off the deep end and, you know, start upgrading it and, you know, buying more cars and adding more horsepower and, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think UTVs are going to continue to be, if not the most important class, one of the most important classes for a long time. Yeah, I think a little bit of that is also the capability of these platforms that they're building. Like, they're able to go anywhere in the world when we're pre-earning um, me and Brock are pre-earning and stuff you know he, he's you know he's got some UTV experience and stuff but he's got a lot of truck experience pre-earning and you're not in the UTVs you're able to make lines go up any mountain yeah. you want we see these uh, UTVs racing King of the Hammers they're they're inching closer and closer to being able to compete with the limited 4400s and yeah. you know that's not very far off of something that you can go buy at a dealership. And that's amazing to me. And that's really the pathway that I see, uh, this sport going, obviously there's the high dollar trophy trucks and stuff, but, um, the UTVs are, are something that's going to continue to grow and, and across seas and all around the world for a very long time. Nice. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think to me, I, I look at it and it's a giant gift slash tool that we have 
to bring new people into our sport and culture and, you know, and just get them stoked on the entire experience, you know? Um, no, it's, it's really cool. You know, besides that, you know, what else are you looking forward to? We were talking earlier and it was like, you know, this year with the players team, you're only obligated to do four races, right? Right. So are you, you know, I think you mentioned you starting to pick up some races in between cause you're a little bored. <laughs> yeah. I'm used to the last couple of years of racing. You know, I, I used to race, you know, twice a month normally yeah. or around there. So I'm obviously only racing four times a year. That, that seems like not a lot. There's a lot of testing and, and a lot of other things that go along with that, um, with the players team. Um, but yeah, I'm always, you know, my motto was, I think back in 2021, in the beginning, I was like, I need to race more. I need to get more seat time. And I didn't care if it was riding or driving. So I ended up, uh, you know, um, getting a phone call from Daniel Foltz, who had a guy named Brent Fox, who had a brand new 6100 truck getting built, and he needed a co-rider. So right. he's like, you know, I don't really want to co-ride. I don't know if that's be very, like, comfortable with that, but I ended up just saying yes. And that transmitted into ultimately, you know, being in a truck and, and racing things that I used to dream about. And, and that's kind of been my motto a little bit is just say yes and, you know, go with the opportunities and make sure make the opportunities happen. Um, but never be afraid to say you say yes to anything. Almost, yeah. you know, we we go explore, go see other other you know other races. We went to Sonora um, a couple months ago, and that's a whole other like ball yeah, it was game pretty cool. for off road. Yeah, it, it was pretty cool. It was very different, you know. And, I, and I've been to Dakar and excuse me, and a, a bunch of other uh, events as well, similar. But it was pretty cool to see all the differences. Yeah. Now, of course, and nowadays we have so many Americans, you know, between Seth. Um, AJ and, and Mitchie and all Ricky, these guys are going over there and they're not just going over there to, to race They're doing, they're going over there to win and, you know, going to Sonora's, I've never been to Dakar or nothing like that. Um, we're all over here in, you know, the Western United States, all, all off-road heads or whatever you were yeah. huge fans off-road. Well, w- what if I told you guys there was a whole nother genre of yeah. off-road that's very similar, but a very different from what we do that we could all be going to race. And yep. that is, you know, uh, rally raid and, and those genres, which is, which is so amazing. And hopefully those guys, um, maybe come, come over here and r- race in the States a little bit and, you know, get us even more into it. I think we have some, um, pretty amazing drivers. I'd love to go do that. Um, I think I'd be pretty successful at that. I think it fits my, um, driving style and characteristics, uh, quite a bit. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to maybe some opportunities there. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Is that, you know, obviously something you want to do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, back to my always just say yes thing is I'll do anything, you know. Um, I'd love to do that. I'd, I'd love to go race on ice. I'd love to go race in the mud, the rocks, anything. I just want to, you know, I want to be behind the wheel of a, of a car, a race car, a shopping car. I don't care. Right. Um, so, um, yeah, that's 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 honestly a little bit of a goal right now is trying to get overseas. And I think a lot of people um, have that same goal at mind. So it's going to be very difficult. But, um, you know, just focusing on making sure I put my best foot forward and trying to get myself um, in a place to where I'm able to do that maybe. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, uh, we are we have so much young talent here yeah. right now uh, because of UTVs that it's crazy. And, you know, I, I had this experience a couple of years ago uh, in Dakar where, you know, Seth and – and, um, um, you know, a few of the other guys, uh, Mitch Guthrie, he went over and they were, uh, you know, fast, yeah. you know, and some of the OG competitors, you know, Cyril Dupre and, um, you know, the whole group of guys who've won, not just once, but multiple times were kind of like, all right, <laughs> here comes, here comes these kids. And I'm like, yeah. And there's, there's dozens of them, you know, really that are very talented yeah, I think it's time for the, the Team America thing, you know? I know, like, with with Players Factory, there's no current discussion of Dakar, but, like, I'm sure that, you know, that's that's the thing that they're looking at and going, okay, this as this program becomes more successful in the U.S., how do we then take that asset and go to Dakar, go to some of these other rally raids, and, uh, you know, and, and beat up on the competition. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the world aspect of it, you know, I'm, I'm from Las Vegas. Um, there's culture here, but you know, there's not, no culture like, you know, Saudi Arabia or anything in Europe. I've never been to Europe, but the amount of untapped, um, land or cultures that I haven't seen or haven't experienced it, uh, I, I want to go see that stuff. And, you know, that's a pretty good avenue to go be able to see that stuff and learn about, you know, other countries, other cultures, other people and such. So, um, 
I'm looking forward to that, and hopefully we can make that happen in a couple of years. I, I inevitably, I think it's going to happen because, again, like I just I look at the investment that Polaris has made, and I'm like, okay, this would be obvious to then take this group of young, talented drivers and then go apply it to other disciplines, right? Um, so, uh, you know, I'm excited for that. You know, again, it's like, obviously, I'm an American, and, and you know, ever since, uh, you know, both Casey Curry and, you know, our yeah. our boy on the bike, you know, went over there and, and won it, you know, that's really made people realize that Americans can come and, and win that, and and especially if we can get some factories to support it. And I don't I really don't care if it's a Hilux or a, you know, or, you know, one of the big cars um, or UTVs. I just, I want to see more American talent go that way and show the world what we're capable of. Give them a little spanking, a little little punch in the eye or whatever, right? But uh, no, that's really cool. You know, um, and it's, it's also like one of those things I feel generationally that like, you know, when you look at your dad's career, I kind of feel weird that nobody offered them that, you know what I mean? It's like those dots weren't connected for whatever reason. And now I look at it and I'm like, you know, I think that that's going to become more and more of a, a, an opportunity for young American drivers is to, to go compete in, uh, in rally raid and, and in Dakar. So I'm excited about watching that unfold. Yeah. I think a little bit of it is if we were having the same conversation 20 years ago, there'd be people wondering what the heck's, Dakar, you know, sure. so, so now again with those guys, those Americans that have um, come from over here and gone over there and had great success, you know, AJ won two in a row. That's amazing. You know, and that, that's really opened the eyes to these American guys and what, what we can do. And uh, I love, you know, we're, we're competitors over here on, on this side of the planet, but, you know, coming together and being together and making like a Team USA or really having, you know, to go, you know, spank the other countries and stuff would be pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's, yeah, AJ... Yeah, AJ in particular, he's won too, you know, so when you start putting that knowledge together and, and also like the other thing that's weird to me about Dakar is like, uh, there's a pretty, uh, big disparity in times between the large vehicles and the UTVs, but that's being fluffed by, um, you know, not penalties, but like, yeah, yeah, like restrictions and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, in, in actuality, when you like step back and look at it, like the deepest pool of competitors is in UTVs, the most, the most sports and still probably in UTVs as well. So it's interesting. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, how, you know, the future plays out. I'm also interested to see talent from other countries, yeah. you know, like, you know, you have all this extreme e stuff going on, which is really cool. Um, and they've brought some people up that I'm like, I didn't know who that person was. And I'm Googling them now. And I'm like, oh, man, that, that woman's a badass yeah. or that guy's a badass. I didn't even know about this person. So I love that that international exchange of, of you know, talent, ideas, you know, whatever. I just think the extreme guys need to listen to us a little bit more <laughs> about building race cars because yeah. uh, we can build them yeah. something that's a little bit tougher. Yeah. You know, but it's still really cool. Absolutely. Yeah. No. That's even another avenue, you know, that I'd love to go is obviously anything, but that extreme E stuff really seems like it's taken off. Um, huge names backing that, you know, yeah. Nico Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton, I believe both have a team, which is, you know, amazing. Those are the, some of the highest names that motorsports have ever really seen. Yeah. Um, and those guys are investing in it. So, you know, to be a part of that would be pretty cool. And now we have RJ over there and yeah. Manna Sorensen, both, you know, from... You know, man and is from Vegas, right? Out of RJ the is from SoCal. You know, these are these are our hometown yeah. guys and girls that are over there. You know, killing it. They're doing yeah. pretty good. Yeah, right out of the gate, they yeah, do yeah. good, right? Yeah. I think that shocked everybody. Yeah, you know, probably. I th- I think that everybody was like, "Whoa, hold on a second, right? Because you know, Europe has a hierarchy of of you know motorsports, right? And so, you know, when we throw, you know, an RJ Anderson into the middle of it, they're like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa." You know, you can't have him beat this guy who's a legend. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, yes, you can. You know, he's got the talent. You know, it's just a matter of lining up the vehicle and the opportunity. So, uh, you know, it's cool. I, I dig it. I, I love, you know, the fact that both him and Amanda are getting the opportunity to, you know, get some international eyeballs on him. I, I think it's going to do nothing but help them in their career going forward. 
Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's definitely something I'd love to do. And even just go over there and watch a race. Um, Fox has some good involvement there. So maybe there's an yeah. opportunity to get over there with those guys and just go check it out. You know, we'll carry some shocks over. Yeah. I'm in. I'll put them in my carry on. <laughs> exactly. I, I don't care. You know, I'll walk right in. <laughs> They're like, Sir, yeah. you can't get through security with this. Yeah. Right? You know, looks a little suspicious. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a bomb. <laughs> maybe. Right? I wasn't going to say it, but yeah, maybe. No, no, it's all good. No, I think it's really cool. You know, and uh, yeah. So Mitch, why is this bike so drippy? It's our 23 race bike. We can start up front, work our way to the back. Bones can tell you about the suspension. The rear shock is one of the most critical parts of the bike. Pegs with the titanium mounts. Kashima coating here. Anti-gravity lightweight battery. Young's modulus. Horse and a half. Works, Works chassis lab. More tie than a space shuttle. Really? I might need that repeated. This thing slaps. Slaps. Oh, you should have told me that earlier. To your point, Fox's involvement in that program now is really cool yeah. because that's you know shock technology that was born here in in southern california and nevada and you know it's it's good but you know for me personally i, I dig it because it's john marking's legacy right and uh you know he's no longer with us but his legacy is right yeah and it, it's cool to see that go you know over the pond and get put on those vehicles and you know, right away, you know, the difference in the performance of the vehicles was pretty drastic. Yeah. You know, so it was pretty cool. So what, you know, you know we, you've got some, some, you know, races this year. And, you know, I know you said earlier, like, you don't have a exact blueprint for, you know, w what is going to go on with your team at the thousand. But, you know, you got to be looking forward to the pre-running, you know, especially with your dad and, the peninsula this year is going backwards, so that that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, no, absolutely. The the thousand being flipped on its head is pretty cool. A lot of these people uh, that have been racing the thousand for you know twenty years, twenty five years. My dad's probably closer to thirty on that one. Um, it, it's it's completely it's backwards. It's similar, but obviously it's you know south to north instead of north to south. Um, that's going to give some guys a, 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 an advantage that don't normally have them. Yeah, um, they, they normally are used. To, you know, these guys that have been racing for a long time, knowing what to do and how to do it. Um, it's similar, but it'll be a little bit different than it. Yeah, obviously, um, I haven't got the prune um, Baja Sur very much at all. Um, uh, we've I've raced down there, um, but I haven't been pruning very much down there. So I, I'm stoked to get down there, um, see the new towns and stuff that I haven't seen that my dad's been going down to um, for 30 years or so. He probably knows some people in every town. I'm sure people know him. Oh, so, they, um, uh, yeah. for sure they do. Like yeah. that, it, and I love Baja Sur, and like the the terrain there is just badass and. Yeah. Also, visually, it's beautiful, you know, so like you're going through, you know, cactus forests, yeah. you know, as far as you can see and, you know, just massive terrain changes over mountains and deserts and beaches and all that kind of stuff. And it, it's, you know, I, I love Northern Baja, you know, it's our backyard, but Southern Baja is really special, yeah. you know, yeah. so I'm 100% like I actually may end up racing with the team. <laughs> But um, regardless, I'm going to go pre-run. Absolutely. You know, it's funny because, like, you, you, it's going to be weird running, you know, south to north because normally, you know, you end in Cabo or, you, I'm sorry, you end in La Paz and it's warm and it's beautiful and you're like, you know, you're you're in the moment. You spend a couple days down there and then you're like looking at the temperatures in Southern California and Nevada and you're like, it's cold up there, yeah. you know. And I don't want to go home, right? This time we'll be back up in Ensenada. It'll be kind of like, wait, do we do we go south now to celebrate? <laughs> so it's going to be interesting. I, I'm excited about it. And, you know, I think to your point, the tactical advantage that people have had because they've run the, you know, the peninsula and they know the train, I think that's going to get turned on its head because now, now it's backwards. And I don't know about you, but like when I run a track backwards, it's a different track. A little bit, yeah. I mean, I think um, I wouldn't say it's completely different. You know, it's a lot, some people pre-run um, forwards and backwards just to see it. You know, not, not pre-run, but you know, go run, go run um, trails and stuff both ways. And, and you know, I, I don't think it's going to be as different as everybody thinks. I, I still think uh, Luke McMillan and Rob Mack are probably going to win. Um, <laughs> I don't have any personal preference or anything, but uh, you know, those guys put their homework in. Yes, um, the they McMillan do. team is amazing. So um, I'm looking forward to that again. Looking forward to racing on my own, getting a, a UTV. Um, you know, twelve, thirteen hundred miles is it's super fun. Yes. Um, that's another thing with the Boston Roads is they're not all beat up from the trophy trucks, which you know we can cr really 
go very similar speeds as trophy trucks on a smoother road and yeah. you know even you know m- medium rough roads we go pretty good so um i'm looking to, uh, to go down there look for looking forward to go down there and um go see some new terrain plus there's a lot of technical stuff in that in that course and in particular like Gro negro to loretto area uh and then then up over the mountain and stuff so you know, the UTVs will have a, a distinct advantage there being four wheel drive and, you know, having a small wheelbase comparatively. I was telling the story earlier, one of the most terrifying experiences I ever had was um, driving a pre runner up over those mountains because the, the road is really barely wide enough for a trophy truck to fit on. And the, you know, pre runners are even harder yeah. to see because of your yeah. seating position. So, I was literally like driving. All I could see is hood. I know there's a cliff on this side, and I'm trying to stay as close to the wall into the vegetation as possible. And I'm like, man, I I can't see the the outside wheel. I hope it's on the road, right? You just gotta think like a donkey. Yeah, that's what well, I learned. Yeah. Right? Whenever I get in a scenario like that where I don't feel like you know super confident going up a narrow road or anything, I always think like somebody else made it, and and I I feel like I can do you know. I can do it if somebody else did it, so I, no problem. And I just go. And yeah, there's times that you know, road gets narrow, and you don't know if it's you know you're on the road or not, and you kind of just keep cruising. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that, seeing some new passes, some new valleys and stuff. And I think Score will do an amazing job setting that course up down south. Um, you know, but first we got to go in the Boff 100. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that's an interesting one because it, you know, 100 miles shorter than the 500, yeah. similar like race. Really, I mean, not, we're not, we haven't seen the race course yet, um, but we know it's going to yeah. be pretty similar, right? We know the areas. Um, and I think because that decides your thousand position, I think people are going to be really pushing it. Yeah, there, there's there's probably both both ends of that. You know, if you push it too hard, you yeah. DNF and you're in the back. Yeah. Um, so you don't want to do that. But um, I go to every race to win. Um, you know, I, I want to go win the 400 just as bad as I want to win the thousand. Um I don't like losing. I'm a sore loser, probably. Yeah, it doesn't um, feel good. No, not not really. And, and, you know, I've done enough of it to know that I never want to do it again. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to go down to the 400 and hopefully do very well and get a good result um, for the 1,000. And I think, uh, you know, the team will be um, very strong for the 1,000. I think we have a couple names going on here um, that we're going to come. We're definitely coming to win. We're not coming to finish the 1,000. We're, we're definitely going to win. So um, I'm looking forward to it, and hopefully we'll, we'll do great. What you know when you think about where you're at in your race career, you know you you kind of talked touched on this a little bit before. Like, are you are you satisfied with where you're at? Or no? no. <laughs> um, I mean, where I'm, am I happy where I'm at? Yeah, but if you ever get complacent or anything, I think that's that's terrible. I mean, that's you're gonna just fold over for people and like, no, not at all. I always want to do do more. I want to be you know super aggressive and making opportunities for myself and. Uh, no, I mean, I'm ne- I'll never be happy with where I'm at, as I guess is kind of the person I'm, I am. And, you know, I, I feel like there's always more that can be done and I can always do better. And the people around me can always do better. And, and sometimes, you know, I, I'm trying to force the people around me to do better, which may not be the best way of uh, doing it. But, um, yeah, no, I'm, 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 am I happy? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked that we made it this far, but I feel like I'm only 2% done. You know, I feel like I got 98% to go and, and that's a lot and sure. keep pushing and, and keep trying to, you know, I, I want to dominate. So um, hopefully we can do that and, you know, just keep pushing forward to, to make that happen. You know, like I know that you work on your own cars yep. and we talked about that being an advantage, you know, so that you understand what's going on with your vehicle when it's having problems or making yep. noises or whatever. You're not like, Oh, I don't know what that is. It's like, that's the front diff or whatever. Right. Was it hard for you to like, let go of that with the current players team and be like, okay, these guys know what they're doing. They got it. You know, yep. I'm the driver now. Yeah, like, there was definitely a piece of that, like, in the beginning. Like, oh, like, I've, you know, very rarely when I race for other people, like, they would be prepping this stuff. And I just became accustomed to just letting it be and, and, and just going and trying to do my best. But, you know, with this team, it's so important to me that, that I have a great vehicle behind me that, yeah, 
we're human. You have doubts and stuff that, that, that um, people are going to do not as good a job as you can do. But, uh, you know, after San Felipe, you, I realized, you know, the guy I got prepping my car, Tyler Canfield, he has been working UTVs for a long time. Um, he can do it. He's more than capable. He's better than me at prepping stuff, which, you know, it's not easy for me to say that because I take pride in my work and sure. like most prep guys. But, um, you know, I'm super confident in, in, in those guys prepping the car. And I think another whole aspect to that is now I'm able, um, I'm not thinking about, you know, getting the, you know, getting the arms mad or, you know, painting the chassis or anything. I'm just worried about trying to win the race right. and making, putting myself in the position to win the race, which is awesome. Um, it, it's, there's really no other way to do it. Um, if you want to go win and, and you take nothing, like second means nothing right. to you, you know, if you want to go win, you need to do it that way to where I'm so, f- you know, the driver, me, is so focused on winning that that's what they're going to do. They convince themselves, they put the work in enough to, to win, and, and they go and perform. Nice. Yeah, you know, and I- It's really cool that you know this guy that's prepping your car. Yeah. You said his name, yeah, right? Of course. And <clears throat> you know, I'm I'm interested to see that dynamic develop and become like a thing that we all talk about, right? Because yeah. you know, I think it's important not just to celebrate the guys who build the cars yeah. Yeah. or the guys who drive the cars, but you know, the prep guys are important. You know, yeah. you, you don't have good prep, you're not winning no. races. Period. No. Yeah, I think a lot of that, you know, my appreciation to prep guys is, is one, yes, prepping on my own and, and, and always, you know, when things failed, it was on me, the driver, the prep guy, the, 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 <clears throat> the motorhome driver, everything. Yeah. Um, but a lot of that came from probably growing up and not necessarily racing and my dad racing short course, you know, once a month for seven or eight months, I, we, for a while there, we had a team about five guys that were full time working on my dad's stuff and like, they're putting their heart and soul into it. Yeah. And, and so, so why shouldn't, I, you know what I mean? You, the, the prep guys are, and so you, you better put as much work and possible you can, you can do to get into that. And, you know, prep guys take a lot of pride in their work. I think that's amazing. Um, there's, there's not a whole ton of, you know, money or success. You're not going to become a millionaire from prepping a race car, no. but they do a better job than some millionaires. So, so, um, you know, it's, it's awesome. You know, those, those prep guys that we have at the shop, there's a couple other guys, you know, for each car and, and they do an awesome job. And, you know, since these cars were, um, born, they've, basically been living in the shop because there's it's so important for them to get these cars together which that's no easy feat you're taking time away from family or you know you're wasting your weekends at the shop and they don't feel like they're wasting their weekends they feel like they're prepping sure. and, and getting ready for the next race to go win and uh, i'm so thankful and happy that um us as a team have been able to you know supply them with two wins this year and you know we're undefeated this year and i, I don't want i don't want to break that streak you know i i think that being undefeated this year isn't a feat. I think it's what ex- it's a spe- expected of us. I think that's what we should be doing. I think that's what we need to be doing. And frankly, that's what we are doing. Um, so uh, hopefully, you know, not even hopefully, like we have to go win these next year races, I feel in my mind. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to go doing that. And I think we have, um, you know, a very good team and, and such that I've already said before to go do that. So uh, those are my feelings on it. And, and you know, I'm, I'm stoked on it, honestly. Yeah. I mean, to be blunt, like I'm, I'm impressed because... You know, when you start a new team like this, you start building new vehicles, and especially on the the Pro R platform, like it's not a proven platform yet. It hasn't had years and years and years racing on it. It's I think it's a great platform. (laughs) The one I have, I don't want to get out of, right? Uh, You know, so, but it's still, you know, in my experience, and not even in my experience, in the history of off road racing, there's always been a teething process of like, okay, great. Like, yep, we're, we're coming. We've got to figure out, you know, this race chassis, this whole program logistics. Like there's a lot to figure out, you know, in, in just going to, you know, compete as one team. Yeah. Then when you're like, no, 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 we're going to have three, four cars, right? Now you force multiplied yeah. the whole thing. And it's like, whoa, you know, there's a lot more moving parts and a lot more to manage. So, you know, winning two races in a row is, I, I think, is really impressive. I, I honestly, I didn't expect. I thought, okay, cool, they're jumping in the deep end. Yeah, they they got some knowledgeable people and they have a budget and all this kind of stuff. But 
I go, uh, if they win a race this year, that'll be cool. That's all I, you know, would hope for. And, you know, stay top five, you know, like get, can be consistent in top five and then build on that over the next couple of years, right? Because then you're learning and you're building the knowledge base. Well, you know, uh, all the different people involved, Scanlon, you know, Ryan, we were talking about earlier, Johnny, Johnny Nelson. It's like, yeah, of course, yeah. right? None of these guys have ever settled their whole lives. No. And I feel like I'm the same way. So yeah, I think it's going to be what I think what's going to be tough is like the resources and and the level of acumen that you guys have and now all the other competitors are like, "Okay, this is what we're racing against. It's it's going to be tougher for them to to, you know, to get victories, you know, especially too like once you start building in this team dynamic of like communicating with each other, pre-running, sharing knowledge, right? We see that in other motorsports where it's like, you know, the guys who have really good teams, they're accelerating at a higher rate than, you know, the single car teams, right? Yeah. No, I think uh, back to your point about, you know, if these guys come out and they top fives, if they get, you know, podiums and stuff, like that would be great. And I think the reason why we've done so good is because we don't think like that. Um we will all want to win. We all feel like we need to win. And, and all these guys that you, then you name some of them, they've all basically made themselves win yeah. their whole lives. You know, they've all been super successful in their own, in their own doings and stuff. So putting them all together, like no wonder you're going to win. You know what I mean? you you got the best of all the people um, that you could possibly have. And, and that's how a lot of um, off-road racers are, you know, they're self-made and, and that that's why a lot of the, the wealthier people do pretty good in our sport because they've had success. They've worked really hard to make, um, big businesses to where they're able to do that a yep. um, little bit different on the McCachern side of the things, but you know, um, in a, in a way very similar, you know, we've always, always worked super hard and, and had to, had to work for the results. So, um, you know, I, I think it's great. Um, putting the, putting the pieces together to be able to win this. And yeah, now we have a target on our back, you know, um, we have the right people. People see, we have the right people. We're, we're proving that we have the right people. So the cards are dealt. Now we got to play the cards and, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I, lo- I love a good car game. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> no, you're I, competitive. Yeah, absolutely. Which is cool. It's cool to see that come out, you know. Um, yeah, I think, you know, obviously UTV racing, I mean, it, it, we've got the biggest amount of entries in, in the classes, and it's super competitive, you know, and you've got a lot of, like, really good people on the Can-Am side. You know, you, you like – you got to go. Be, you got to go out and beat Blurton. You know he's the guy to beat in UTVs, yeah. right? And then you got to beat Sims, right? And then you got to beat Mitch Guthrie, and then you got to beat, uh, you know, I, I'm forgetting everybody yeah. else, but the you know, it, it's you know the Matlocks, right? Um, Dustin Jones, yeah. you know, like it, it's interesting because again, it's like the level of equipment talent. Um, we don't have that in really in many other forms of racing period. Right. Um, and that, that's really cool to see. It makes the win mean that much more. Yeah, no, absolutely. If you get every trophy truck racer in the world together in one race, you're going to have 10 or 15 people that can win max. Yeah. I, I, I think so. Um, if you get every UTV racer in the world together and, and a desert racing go, you're going to have 30 people that can win at least. So I, I think, I think that's a pretty cool aspect. And I honestly haven't really thought about that till just now, which, um, you know, makes it feel even better when you do run. And yeah, uh, those, those, those boys, Phil and, and Dustin Jones and Mitchie, they're all, you know, aiming for us just as much as anybody else. You know, they want to beat us. I think we've, uh, we've established ourselves as a, as a force to be reckoned with. And, you know, we're not going to let those guys beat us, you know, hope, hopefully anyway, yeah. um, there's no hopefully in racing, but, um, I'm stoked to be on this side of things. Let's yeah. just say that. Yeah, no, it's, I, I was stoked when, you know, when the whole thing fleshed out for you, because, you know, like I look at young talent like you and I'm like, all they need is opportunity. Yeah. Right. The talent's there. They'll do the work. Let's just figure out a way to get them some opportunity. And I'm, I'm glad that, that Polaris looked at it that way, you know, instead of, um, you know, just kind of phoning it in and saying, oh, we're just going to take the top guys, group them together, call it the players, right. you know, factory yeah, team. Yeah. So it was, it was a different approach than I thought they would take. But I'm, I'm glad they did it because, you know, it's given some drivers that um, that didn't previously have the opportunity, you know. So and, and I hope, you know, I know like we were talking before about um, uh, Ethan Groom, right? Yeah. He's a really good racer, and he's been riding with you guys, right? So 
I want to see more of that. I want to see them feed more young people into that that opportunity and go, okay, we're going to put this young person in and this young person, uh, you know, in and, and you know, <laughs> groom them to be, you know, the driver at some point by, you know, allowing them to ride with, you know, really good, capable, knowledgeable racers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's sort of how I learned. I always said, like, my dad didn't teach me how to how to race off road. I kind of just learned, um, whether you know from him playing video games, watching it. You know, you kind of just learn from being around it. And so I forced myself to be around it as much as possible, and that's paid off for me. So, um, yeah, th- there's a lot of young talent. I raced the Work Series the last couple of years, and those are some of the fastest racers in UTV. I or honestly, I was able to basically jump out of the Work Series, um, being one of the top guys there. And, and jump into a trophy truck and, and qualify first at the California 300. So yeah. I, I think we definitely have. And there's there's guys that are very close to the same level as me in the work series that are you know um, amazing drivers. Again, there's a there's a there's a you know difference between the the Grand Prix style off road racing that right. is works and such and, and and desert. But you know there's a lot of kids that race that series and you know even short course back east and stuff that 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 are you know probably better than some of the top trophy truck guys sure. and, and everything. So it'll be cool to, you know, see a lot of those kids come up, um, you know, and, and just, you know, keep working on their craft and, and dedicating their heart to off road, just like we've all done. Yeah. Short course is interesting because it's like, it's really a pressure cooker. You yeah. know what I mean? Cause like you can't, it's a shorter race, but you can't really make any mistakes. Right. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if you just grew up only doing desert yeah. racing, then you kind of get a little bit lax. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, I love short course. Yeah, I think yeah. I think that was part of the success of your dad, yeah. too, is that, you know, he grew up in an era where there was, you know, Mickey Thompson, and he and he raced it, and he raced all these, and then his legacy in short course racing, and it was like, cool, next weekend we're racing desert, right? Talk about seat time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that those skill sets do transfer over, and, and you know, I, I, I like – seeing the you know the kids come out of works and get into the desert i mean when we started utv world championship that was one of our goals was like to get you know to convert short course racers because you know not that i want short course to go away in any ways i think it's really important to our culture but i also wanted to show them give them enough of a taste to where they're like, hmm, oh, yeah, okay, six hours of racing? Yeah. That sounds yeah. pretty good compared to, you know, 30 minutes or whatever the moto is and, and works, yeah. right? And uh, frankly, I've never been a track guy. I love yeah. I love short course off-road. Um, I respect motocross. I respect, uh, you know, supercross. Supercross is like the physicality of it is just bonkers, right? Yeah. You know, I, I wish I actually wish that those athletes were celebrated more in our culture, right? Um, than you know, the basketball players. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's they're all hard sports, yeah, but yeah. man, you, like Supercross is so physical. You know, you can only maintain it at top level for so many years. a decade, yeah, yeah. maybe ten years, yeah. right? And you're just smoked, yeah. right? You know, um, but uh, it's you know it's interesting to see the evolution of short course and, and, and its effect on, you know, these kids coming out of that and going into desert racing, like obviously, I don't know, 10 years ago, short course was big. It was really important. And now that's faded. Right. So now you have all these people like going, Oh yeah. yeah." Like one of them, uh, Polvorde, right. Like it it was funny because I was just on this podcast, um, with, um, you know, battle proof motors podcast with Chris and, you know, he did the Mod Kids right. uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, movie series, or you know, and uh, it highlighted all those those kids. And I just was looking at that. I'm like, of course he's fast. Look at where you know yeah. what I mean. It's like he was basically born yeah, into yeah. a car. They're yeah. like, oh, he's born, and then we taught him how to shift, and he's racing. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, all right, Chase, number twenty three. It's twenty twenty three. This championship's yours. Let's show these guys what's up. Easy, boys. It's not over yet. Big dog still got to eat. <laughs> Whatever you say, big dog. Seriously? These fools think I'm fried? They know the deal. I think there's, like, the short course stuff. Like, there should always be a place for it. I think it's, like, some of our best racing we have. Yeah. There's something about being 100% for whatever 10 or 12 laps. 
Um, that's awesome. You know, the car setup piece of short course is amazing because it's so dependent on that. As yeah. long as I, I was well as a good driver and everything, but you know, I've always had a little bit of an as, uh, asphyxiation or whatever you call it. I don't know if that's the word for it. No, that means I, to choke somebody. Yeah, right? I, don't, I don't know. What a that fixation. Is. A right? fixation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Thanks for the grammar lesson. No, no problem. <laughs> but, I, I don't want you to mess that <laughs> no, one up, especially yeah, with a girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might, might be bad. Matt. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, the short course stuff. It's it's awesome, and and you know, I, I love you know I've been getting tastes of it once here and there i've never sure. really raced you know a full series of short course i'd love to do it that's what i grew up watching yeah. you know the desert stuff was always hard for me to go to you know being six seven eight years old you know i didn't know what was going on in a desert race but a short course race i could probably kind of follow along and see the trucks uh fly through the air and make a lot of noise so um i think there's there's, there's something to be said yeah back to the the short course kids coming out like povorde and, and even brock and yep. you know in, in ways me the work stuff was a little different but a lot of the same you know we raced on a you know five or six mile course um for an hour and and right. you know a lot of the times there'd be a guy two seconds behind you the whole race so you just are less right on your bumper the whole race and that's what short course is too you know you're going 100 percent as fast as you can go and there's people around you that are crashing bumping into you and everything so when you get those kids like Pavorty, hager me a lot there's a ton of other kids the list goes on into uh off-road into desert and we're sitting on the line of the ball 500 and we go off and the next truck doesn't go off until 30 seconds after us we have no pressure right and, and we just you know go and we just do what we think we need to do it's super easy in a way. And, you know, I think that's what, um, some of the success I've had in the desert is obviously from, um, racing the, that, that more intense, um, battle style UFC fight type racing. Sure. Um, up, yeah. Yeah. I think well, it's that, it's that old adage of like, you know, pressure makes diamonds, right? Steel sharpens steel. And like when you're in the, when you're under the pressure short course where, you know, not only if you make a mistake, make a mistake, you're screwed, but also, Everybody's watching you, yeah. you know, so it's it's not like nobody saw that. It's like, oh, man, you screwed up yeah, there, yeah. right? So you learn very quick, right, yeah. not to do that. And it's it's a little bit more, uh, I think, disciplined and, and obviously intense. So I think there is, you know, there is a lot of stuff. It's funny because, like, again, sitting here with you and talking about this, now I'm remembering stuff like moments that I've had with your dad in short course racing. Yeah. And um, one of them was – you know, led me to all of this in off road. And I didn't even know who your dad was at the time, you know, but, um, <clears throat> we're, we're in Jack Murphy stadium, late eighties, uh, Mickey Thompson. Right. And we, uh, you know, we end up on the floor and, and, you know, because we'd come in with my cousin and, and his disco truck, right. As a, as a halftime show. And we were, you know, we're sitting there and they're, you know, there's 60, 65,000 people screaming, you know, freaking out. The whole stadium's filled. And we're just like, holy yeah, cow, right? Yeah. And, you know, I can't remember the announcer that they had, but he was good. And, they, and he had the big voice. Yeah. And he's like, and Rob McEachran, <laughs> right? And, yeah, I, yeah. and then this dude next to me waves his arm. And I'm like, <laughs> and the TV camera's over and like, oh. we're like, it's he, that's him? Yeah. Right? It was, it was a pretty cool moment because it it showed me the, that our culture in particular, like you can go talk to these guys, yeah. you know, and they're regular people and they'll talk to you. They're not, you know, F one guys who are like, yo, you can't get 20 feet in, in you know, within them, yeah. you know, like, yeah. you know, so it, that was really cool. Um, Chula Vista, man. Yeah. Like that Chula Vista track was special. Tony Vanillo uh, built that track. Uh, <laughs> I gave him a bunch of, you know, weird ideas, that half of me didn't listen to, which is probably a good thing because yeah. people would have probably died. Because <laughs> I was thinking more in video game yeah. terms, like, yeah, I'll be fine. But like the the wall ride um, going up it, and then the ski jump coming off of it were just so rad because you're sitting there as a spectator, and they would jump it, right? And I remember talking to your dad about it, how, how cool it is, and he goes, "Yeah, it's not that cool because <laughs> we have to hit it blind." <laughs> And I'm like, oh, what do you mean? And then we went up there and looked at it in a cart, and I'm like, oh, shit. So you, you've you got to send it yeah. without seeing where your landing is, you know, and go – and then make a make yeah, a yeah. right-hand turn, right? And I'm like, well, that's dumb. You know what <laughs> I mean? But it looks really cool. Yeah, yeah. But, no, it was just – it was rad. And watching your dad, like, just really just Jedi out, you know, and, and then watching them, like like – Back then, they were doing this thing where, like, they would 
re-rack mid-race, Rob would get to the yeah. front, and they're yeah, like, yeah. okay, Rob, you go to the back, the back now. Again. And he's yeah. like, what do you mean? Yeah. Right? And then he would still win, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, it, it was it was really cool. It was it was I was really glad to uh, you know have have witnessed that era of short course racing yeah. uh, on the West Coast in particular. And then you know too, then going back to Crandon, like yeah. that was like that was a holy shit moment. You know, <laughs> I was telling these guys who who work with me, I'm like, I showed up there with a camera, and I walked in, and I'm like, okay, uh, uh, where do I sign off my media credentials <laughs> for my media credentials? And they're like. What do you mean? I'm like, well, do you have a vest? Do you have a, you know, release form? And they're like, just don't die. <laughs> and I'm like, what? That's it? Yeah, that's it. And like a like a dummy, like I go set my camera up basically on the wall, yeah. right? On turn one. Yeah. And I hadn't watched like I'd seen turn one before on film, but but until you're there in person, you have no real idea of, you know, right. what it's about. And like, you know, I have my camera and my little tripod and i'm all set up i'm like oh, practicing my whip pans and stuff and like dude it was like thunder coming down and then i realized like i'm only four feet off the inside <laughs> truck yeah. right on this little you know three foot wall and if yeah. anything goes wrong they're gonna come way up over that wall and just roll over me like i was a gopher you know what i mean and uh, yeah, I just about shit myself, right? And <laughs> yep. I blew the shot, yep. you know. But luckily, there were more races, and I'm like, you know. And the, I remember the flag guy laughing at me because I was, I reacted so, you know. I was like, ah, yeah. you know. But uh, no, it was, it was cool. You know, it was cool to be there. You know, for uh, a lot of those moments and see, you know, your dad get, you know, I think I can't remember what it was, his 300th win or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was like. <laughs> I remember like them making a big deal about it. I'm like, wait, how many? <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, so that was really cool. And you know, on that note, you know, I I, I think that uh, you know, I'm really impressed with um your um maturity, right, at your age, you know. And it was something that I didn't really expect, you know, because I've been around a lot of adults, yeah. right, and young racers, and I think you've you've done a really good job of kind of like keeping your cool, you know, not letting victories and opportunities go to your head and, you know, just kind of like doing your thing. So I, I, I have no doubt that you're going to have, you know, if you continue in this fashion, you're going to have an incredibly successful career, you know. So I'm looking forward to watching that unfold. Yep. I appreciate it. And, and thank you for uh, having me here. And, you know, I'm yeah, that's my plan. Keep keep going, keep pushing. Hopefully, you know, I'll, I'll never be happy with, you know, winning a race. I want to win more races. I want to win the next one. I, I, I never want to lose. I, I want to do more than that. I want to help UTVs grow. Um, I want to help, you know, younger people in our industry, you know, drivers and uh, l little boys and little girls help, you know, them, them get into the sport that I love and, you know, continue to you keep battling with these guys and, and you know, wage war with each other on the, in the desert and in short course and stuff and continue to, to battle and hopefully be doing this for a really long time. And hopefully you'll see me all wrinkled up and 70, 80 years old, still trying to strap into a, to an unlimited truck. So, uh, yeah, we'll be talking then maybe. Awesome. Well, I look forward to it. Thanks for coming, brother. Yep. Thank you. All right.